Today, I'm sharing the top eight tips for using Prisma ORM with MongoDB. If you're building applications with MongoDB and you want to use Prisma as your ORM, there are some important considerations that you need to know. MongoDB's document-based approach works differently from relational databases, and Prisma ORM has specific ways of handling these differences. I've spent years working with both MongoDB and Prisma ORM, and I've compiled the most critical tips that will save you hours of debugging and help you build more efficient applications. These aren't just basic setup instructions. These are the practical insights that make the difference between a struggling application and one that performs smoothly in production. Tip number one. Configure MongoDB with a replica set. MongoDB with Prisma ORM requires a replica set configuration. This isn't optional, it's mandatory. Prisma uses transactions internally to avoid partial writes on nested queries, and MongoDB only allows transactions on replica sets. If you try to use Prisma ORM with a standalone MongoDB instance, you'll get the error, transactions are not supported by this deployment. This happens even for simple operations because Prisma wraps operations in transactions behind the scenes. The easiest solution is to use MongoDB Atlas, which provides replica sets by default even on the free tier. For local development, you can convert a standalone MongoDB instance to a replica set by following MongoDB's documentation linked in the description below. Tip number two, working with object ID fields. In MongoDB, the primary key is typically an object ID stored in the underscore ID field. When working with Prisma ORM, you need to properly map this in your schema. Any field that maps to an object ID in MongoDB must be defined as either string or byte types in your Prisma schema. It must include the at DB dot object ID attribute, and it should use at default auto for auto generated IDs. Here's how to define a model with an object ID primary key. When you need to generate an object ID for testing or to manually set an ID, use the BSON package. Tip number three, understand the differences between null and missing fields. MongoDB distinguishes between fields that are explicitly set to null and fields that don't exist at all. There's this thing called polymorphism in MongoDB. And it's the ability to have multiple types of data in the same collection. This distinction is important when filtering data. When you create a record without explicitly setting an optional field, MongoDB doesn't store that field at all. But Prisma ORM will return null for that field in your query results, making it appear the same as a field explicitly set to null. So when filtering for null values, you'll only match records where the field is explicitly set to null, not records where the field is missing. To include missing fields in your filter, use the is set operator like this. Tip number four, handle relations properly. MongoDB handles relationships through document references and embedded documents, which differs from the foreign key approach in relational databases. When introspecting a MongoDB database, Prisma ORM may need help understanding these relationship patterns. After introspection, you'll need to manually add relation fields to your models. For example, if you have a post model with a user ID field, you'll need to add the relation to the user model like this. And remember that relation fields in MongoDB should always use the at db.objectid attribute when they reference another document's ID. Tip number five, model embedded documents with type. MongoDB's document model allows you to embed structured data directly within documents. This is one of MongoDB's core advantages, the ability to store related data in a single document, reducing the need for joins. Prisma ORM supports this pattern through the type keyword. Unlike models, types in Prisma don't create separate collections in MongoDB. Instead, they represent embedded document structures that exist inside a model. Here's how to define and use embedded types. And here's how to work with those embedded types in your code. Embedded documents work well for data that is always accessed together with the parent document, has a clear ownership relationship, it belongs to exactly one parent, and doesn't need to be queried independently. Tip number six, simplified schema management with MongoDB. MongoDB's flexible schema design eliminates the need for complex migrations. You can modify your data model without downtime or migration scripts, a key difference over traditional databases. With Prisma ORM and MongoDB, use Prisma DB push to sync your schema changes. This command will create collections if they don't exist, set up indexes for at unique fields, and update your Prisma client automatically. Tip number seven, 
key MongoDB and Prisma design considerations. Here are some important key points to consider when using Prisma ORM with MongoDB. MongoDB uses a single underscore ID field for primary keys rather than composite IDs with ID. For ID generation, use auto with object ID instead of auto increment. Cyclic references with referential actions work best with no action to maintain data consistency. Some MongoDB specific types like Decimal 128 have partial support in the current version of Prisma ORM. These points highlight the fundamental differences between how document databases and relational databases work. When you know these technical distinctions, you can create applications that work better with MongoDB's specific structure. Tip number eight, optimize for large collections. MongoDB performance can degrade with large collections if you're not careful when using Prisma ORM. Consider these tips to help you optimize your queries. Be strategic with indexes. Add at index to fields you frequently query on. Use projection to limit returned fields. Use select to specify only the fields you need. Paginate results. Use skip and take to limit the number of documents processed. Consider using MongoDB's aggregation pipeline for complex operations via Prisma's run command raw command. Here's an example of optimizing a query on a large collection. These eight tips will help you effectively use Prisma ORM with MongoDB while avoiding common pitfalls. Remember that MongoDB's document model is fundamentally different from relational databases, and understanding these differences is key to building performant applications. Check out my complete walkthrough of building a full stack app with Next.js, Prisma ORM, and MongoDB to see it in action. So a quick recap, always use a replica set configuration, handle object IDs correctly, understand the difference between null and missing fields, manage relations properly, use DB push instead of migrations, adapt to MongoDB's document model features, and optimize for large collections. Drop a comment if you have any questions about using Prisma ORM with MongoDB, or if you'd like to see more in-depth coverage of any of these topics. If this video was helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more content like this.